Are we on? Yep. Right. <laughs> Hello again from Trace Gaff. Um, we're here to discuss Nigel's journey through his life to where he's at now, which we are doing because we believe it will help other people who are living similar kinds of lives and maybe don't get the kind of support that, that Nigel's getting now. Uh, we discussed last week, and these two obviously are brain dead, so they won't remember. Uh, we talked about Jacqueline and Nigel's relationship, which is still ongoing. Um, it's it's difficult now because Jacqueline's not able to no, spend as much time with Nigel and then get out and about, but we, we touched on that. The next milestone we're going to be discussing now is Nigel's um, weight gain which we have mentioned before in previous either podcasts or on the blog online, on the Facebook. Um, it's, it's an issue which runs right the way through um, social care, I believe, in my experience. Uh, and that's just the people who support the people with learning disabilities uh, carrying weight. Um, unhealthy lifestyles that we should allow to perpetuate. Uh, we had uh, a lady on our books for quite a while called Jennifer, uh, and she lost all of her teeth. And the reason why she lost all her teeth is because nobody took the time to look after dental hygiene. We like to think that we look after Nigel's uh, well-being and his health, uh, not in a way where we try to control what Nigel's doing because things are black and white. Um, it's just really about being aware of the things you're doing and how you can moderate them and not overeat, overindulge, which most people do now and again. But if you keep doing it week in, week out, it's going to affect your health big time. Uh, things like diabetes and, and heart trouble, etc. And Nigel, your dad had heart trouble, didn't he? he yeah. From, no, a, from a heart attack. He did, yeah. So, you know, I mean, at the moment, when Nigel's had tests and things, and he's, he's still in a good good condition anyway, based on the tests. But these things can suddenly come out of the uh, woodwork and hit you quite uh, quickly, strokes and yeah. things. You can look well and feel well, bang, it hits you. So we're going to talk now, well, Nigel's going to talk anyway, a little bit about his journey um, up to where he became obese and his journey away from becoming obese. Yeah? So I'm going to ask Nigel some questions. We're going to bring in skinny uh, bitches <laughs> to, uh, to counter the obesity side. Because, um, you know, you can get fat shamed and you can get skinny shamed as well. You know, you don't have to uh, be fat to just be yeah. um, picked at. You know, a lot of people who are jealous of people who are thin will pick at them and call them names. I have. I've had that for a number of years. Uh, I, I did recently. Uh, I was actually coming down from the post box where I live, and Ori Dialad was going past in the uh, the car. Proceeded to well not wind the window down. Sorry, I'm back in the seventies again now. He pressed the button and the window went down, and showed. I oh, put them legs away, lad. Seagulls are about. Now we know where that comes from, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah. Uh, so I just shouted, oh. <laughs> At least I can show my legs, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't actually see them, can you? Um, can't. So, sorry, I'm diversified there. So, Nigel, when did you first become aware that you were carrying way, way too much weight that could affect your health? Do you remember a time when you, when you realised that you were, you were massively overweight? Did Jackie ever say anything in, in the past when you started to put weight on? Do you remember anything? Did we say anything to you? I uh, can't remember Is that words now. What things did you notice? What about your clothes? Well, I had to get different bigger clothes as well. And uh, get ones that fitted and throw, maybe throw out what I couldn't wear. Yeah, because you were getting bigger and bigger waists, you know, your, your boxer shorts are looking like a flag, the putting way, on yeah. a flagpole. Um, so, when when you're aware of that, did you actually attempt to change it, or did you just carry on eating the way you were? I just carried on eating the way I was. And did you find that when you, um, you know, you probably had people say things to you, or, 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 or look at you in certain ways when you were out and about, did you ever have anybody say anything to you about your, your weight? A few things, yeah. That fat, fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fat we're laughing, boy. but it's not nice when you're out and about, no, and, you know, you're not, carrying no. uh, weight. 
Um, and, and I know you did mention to me a couple of times that things have been said to you. Yeah. Uh, I think those two women at the end as well, they yeah. also uh, had a go. So how then did things change? What, what instigated that change? Well, about what, what can happen when, if you have uh, too much weight on. It, it, can, it can affect you walking and stuff like that and you fix your organs as well yeah but you had some falls as well nice didn't you yeah definitely I did. and you had some dizzy spells as well i certainly did yeah and we went for for, for all the uh, tests and things uh which actually we were going to follow up now i was thinking now so what we to do with the was it the penrith one yes yeah because now still hasn't had his yeah. uh, that's that probably is because of lockdown yeah. Uh, I mean, I should have had a scan yonks ago, and I'm still having everything back. So, no. sorry, go on, Nigel. So, the things that uh, you started to notice were starting to affect you because of the extra weight. You know, you were getting uh, called names. That was one thing. You're aware of your clothes being um, oh, yeah, the... too tight. Uh, mobility. Yeah, mobility was. Did, did that yeah. get worse because you were carrying the extra weight? Yeah. Started getting a bit worse, yeah. And the dizzy spells as well? Yeah, and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, and I think when we went to the nurse, uh, she made you aware of the risks attached to carrying that excess weight. Yeah. And do you, know, do you remember what the risks were? Well, so to do your heart and your lungs as well. Yeah, because you had trouble with your breathing as well, didn't you? Yeah, and breathing as well, yeah. Well, that, that's one of the things as well, just to diversify slightly, where... I get concerned because the virus is around so we've got a new one now as well or the government's advisors are saying it's only a mild one uh, it's still a virus and it still affects your respiratory um, areas so if you do contract something like that and you carry an excess weight the breathing aspect which is what this virus tends to, yeah. to, to hit you're more likely to, to struggle really badly with it yeah. and you've probably seen it on TV where you've seen big people on these respirators and that um, it, it's it's not good if you carry excess weight. It's not good if you're not carrying weight, but it's even worse if you can't breathe properly. Yeah, another reason why we were, you know, really keen this time to to keep you down to yeah. a to a level. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because yeah. I mean, you're still carrying too much, but you've come down ex massively from where you were. It was twenty three stone, wasn't it? I yeah, down 23 I, I think stone. I vaguely remember before you lost the weight, didn't you have a stroke? Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. He won. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, uh, yeah. Eight two. Yeah, there was a term that they used for it as well. But it, it, what what the doctor said was that although it was only a uh, a mini one, a mild one, mm. it, it it was telling you right, it's heading towards a, a proper one. And you know, he said, my concern. I remember talking to him. He said, my concern is that uh, you could end up with paralysis. And of course, the worst case scenario is it actually kills you. Uh, remember Brian, Brian Glaster? I used to look after him on Hospital Hill in think Hensingham. So. Think so. uh, he just died recently. He had a stroke and he lost the use on one side, uh, which is why I used to go and look after him. I used to bath him and stuff like that. Um, didn't want bath, but I did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your carer. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't you talk. laughs> yeah. But Brian um, died. Lovely man. Uh, but he carried on drinking, he carried on drinking excessively and you know he was warned by his, his, his kids and stuff like that mm. but he wouldn't stop and he eventually killed him. He was only, I say Brian would be what, 60 I think when he died, mm. which is still young nowadays really. So it is better to be vigilant but, but without guilt tripping people because you can actually make things worse and yeah. that's what we've talked about now, haven't we? You know, not you worrying about, oh God I've eaten one extra tea cake, they're going to tell me off. Because the likelihood is that you're going to have another tea cake just to comfort yourself before you actually get told off. <laughs> um, so it's about moderation, isn't it? It's about balancing yeah, it out. Is, uh... Do you think that we got to that point where you reduced the weight quite massively and you were better in your mobility, your, your, uh, your thinking, your breathing? Did all that improve? Yeah, it did, yeah. It did improve, yeah. And how did it make you feel? Better. So what do you think happened then for you to start to go back up again? Maybe just the, uh, the situation I'm with Jacqueline and stuff and uh, the weather as well, dark nights and stuff. 
So if, if people are listening who are struggling with the weight, and, and you know, we are talking about your particular client group uh, who maybe live on their own, you yeah. know, um, what, what message would you send out to them about the importance of being aware of your desire to eat more? And then you start to put weight on, and then it just goes up and up and up. What would you advise people to do? Because that's the battle you're fighting at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. What would you advise people to do about it? What are you doing about it? Hell. Well, I'm going to be. St- still have uh, some of the stuff I enjoy, but don't over overdose on it, mm-hmm. and just reduce what you like. I mean, I've, I've noticed you've been, you've been more aware of it now yeah. than, than ever before. Uh, and it's them little changes that I think are important. Because, you, you know, you, if you suddenly stop somebody, you know, we had talk like cold turkey yeah. back then days of being locked in your flat and looking around the, the waiter room for cheese. <laughs> you those days now, sure? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't work, does it? No, it does not. So if you're aware of the amounts of food you eat and it's putting weight on you, and then you're doing it because you feel a little bit low. Yeah, I is do, it yeah. not going to make you feel more low if you've done that? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that then. Because you seem to comfort it, don't you? And uh, it's well, you don't, but you. You accuse me of comforting, actually. <laughs> well, it, it can't co- it, it can't come in, can it? Comforting. So when would you? When would be the times when you would probably comfort it? Think of some things that would trigger that comfort eating. You mentioned one earlier. The night, sir. Night time when it's a bit dark and yeah. miserable and yeah. you're on your own and there's naff all on the telly, which is quite normal. Uh, you've had your crack with Jack on the telephone and then yeah. when you come off the telephone, it's always a bit fly anywhere because, yeah. you know, it's my girlfriend and she's there and I'm, I'm here. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So then you, you look for food. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> and unlike the first time when, when you were obese, <laughs> there's food around, isn't there? Yeah. yeah? So what do you do when there's food around? <laughs> well, well, you just have it. <laughs> but how do you feel once you've had it, though? Happy and stuff. And then, yeah. oh. and then you get on the scales in the weighing room. Yeah. And... I could hear in your voice how disappointed you were. Yeah. Because immediately you said, oh God, I've put weight on. I was... Yeah. So today, because you felt guilty because you'd put it on, how can you deal with that? What can you do to deal with that? Is it something you should put guilt on someone for? Or how would you talk to them? How would you deal with that? You could fat shame them. You don't have to shame them, no. Get off the scales, you've had get you <laughs> three pounds off. <laughs> Is that the right method, Nigel, or no? No, it's not, no. It's not the right method. So, does the guilt feel bad? Do you feel ashamed that you keep and putting weight on? Or do you think, OK, I've fluffed it now, but I'm going to try and change that? What are you thinking now, if you go back to the obese days, where you're just sitting and eating and getting more weight on, how do you feel now? What's changed? If you put a bit of excess weight on, how do you deal with that? Well, you just, uh, you don't eat as much as you do. You still eat stuff you like, but you don't eat more. You, just, you don't OD. You don't OD and you just... You just reduce what you'll. You just reduce it. So this is not just about losing weight, is it? This is this is about managing your emotions around food, isn't it? Yeah. And this is a big issue, and not just for people with big issue. Big <laughs> issue. Yeah. This is about sitting outside in the cold. God love them. They probably get paid a pittance, and they're I trying do. to sell a big issue. I mean, I actually bought one one day. So I felt sorry for it. <laughs> it's freezing. Big issue. Oh God, I have one. <laughs> Didn't read it, but. I, Give it a pound. Um, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> so, your you, emotions would predispose you to eat. 
yeah? Yeah. We all look for pleasure. There's a part of the brain there that likes the pleasure. If in the early days you've had sweets, the brain remembers that because it made you feel good because it's, it's sugary. Yeah. So therefore it wants to do that again. Food, just the same. Chocolate, yeah, just the same. So it isn't something that you haven't got control of, but it is actually something you can take control of. So I'm only about telling people not to eat too much, but as soon as it's there and they're on their own and they feel a bit flat, they're going to have it anyway. Yeah? But what you've got to do is adapt things and change the way you think. Bit of CBT there, Trev. <laughs> so, and, and you're doing this now, Nigel. You might not think you, you are, but you actually are. You are becoming more aware of how that extra weight makes you feel. Yeah. And right, okay, I don't like that. So if I'm going to head to the fridge to get another lump of cheese, <laughs> right, I'm not going to do that. I've already had some, I'm just going to change that. And you, sort of a chilly, and again, you can't see, but you actually are changing it. Yeah. And even though you've had a recent weight increase, that's probably around the dark days, the wet days, the kind of being lonely, whatever, that's quite normal. Yeah. Yeah? So the message you would send out to people uh, who are listening now, hopefully, um, who are living on their own, like, say, Gary and people like that, yeah. what would you tell them if they do sometimes overeat? How would you tell them to deal with it? What should they, what should they do, do you think? What can help them? What helps you? Give advice. Because that's what we haven't mentioned so far. Mm. You can't just deal with this on your own. Yeah, uh, get asked for help or, well, get, well, hear help and just get some advice on what you should do. Well, yeah, or join a group of overeaters <laughs> yeah. and then you can go in Nigel and, and stand up and tell people I'm Nigel Geldard and I'm a fat get. Um, <laughs> that, that could work. <laughs> Not. And they'll all go, yeah, yeah, we're the same, Nigel, yeah. They can all talk about food in the yeah. break time and things, can't you? Or go on a blog. <laughs> go on a blog, uh. Do you think? Yeah, I had uh, six portions of chips last night, but I only had four. Couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's, take, that's actually taken from a, a real situation. Because I, I, I went through these particular blogs. I was working with addiction then, just to see what people were talking about on these blogs about food. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. And these were people's Weight Watchers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I only had two bars of chocolate last night, and um, I, mean, I felt okay. Yeah, well, I only had one last night, uh, and I was slimmer of the week last week. Mm -hmm. I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> two in the morning. So you imagine what they were doing at two in the morning, yeah. can't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, midnight luncheon. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever watch the, and I never remember what it was on, Nigel. I know we diversified started, but he actually still is in the same theme. Do you remember him off League of Gentlemen? They did that, uh, <laughs> was he like Job Club or something? And they used to shame people uh, that didn't find jobs. Do you remember? And he, I think I remember. He was him off Benny Dorm, I think. You know, he played a part in Benny Dorm. I think he did. And he was on League of Gentlemen, there was two of them. Yeah, uh, well, they had one where it was Weight Watchers. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> do you remember it? Yeah, I do. I <laughs> and he's Tracy, and she's, <laughs> she's put 20 pounds on this week, haven't you, Tracy? Come to the front now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. It was, uh, I remember that. But inadvertently, Weight Watchers guilt trip people. And they do it because they're making money. It's, it's, it's yeah, they something are, to make yeah. money out of. But have you even noticed how the Weight Watchers <laughs> agents are overweight? I have you seen them, so. Nigel? I think I've seen some people. Huh? Like that. So they're telling people about the importance of being thin, and then they're making money out of people that are fat, and they're fat. How does that work? No, I'm not sure. I mean, you're not going to get motivated, are you, unless you deal with somebody that actually has maybe gone through it and keeping and maintaining yeah. a healthy weight. Yeah. I mean, I'm tracing. I was 23 stone um, last week, and now I'm only one stone. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the front, Tracy. <laughs> we can't see you. <laughs> 14 stone in a day. Mm -hmm. We're lost. Uh, mm. Where were we now? <laughs> <We're> lost. <laughs> So, would would you 
say then that eating is a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. But it's none of the, uh, It is. It is. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Because you know. Christmas is coming up and people are going to be over eating and gorging and whatever yeah. else. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah, definitely. And they'll justify that. Barry, and drink as it's well. It's Christmas, you yeah, drink as well, yeah. yeah. Um, but we're talking about weight gain, aren't we? Yeah, we are, yes. And it's all very well eating and enjoying it. Yeah, but definitely. But if you're overeating, you'll, eat, you'll get to a point where you don't enjoy it. And it becomes something that affects your emotions psychologically, etc. And you're more likely to then eat more again. It's a yeah. bit like an alcoholic, you know. The drink just becomes something they have to have rather than enjoying it. You know, the taste no longer... I, mean, I remember the first taste of beer. I was a young lad. I was only 14, I think. And one of my uncles passed me a... You know, I used to do it in them days. You can't, probably can't do it now. Uh, yeah, have a drink, boy. Have a drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get a long life, come on, get in there. Yeah. And then you got the offy uh, shortly after and becoming a. Oh, thanks, Uncle, for that. <laughs> My life's ruined now because of you. 14 stone in a day. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Nigel, it's turned into a comedy yeah. sketch, hasn't it? He does, yeah. <laughs> I want you, in your own words, uh, to say to people now who are in similar conditions to yourself, what should they be doing in order to, to deal with it? Now, you mentioned about going to someone and asking for support, and that is a big one, isn't it? Yeah, support, yeah. yeah. What kind of support would you expect from them, though? And what support would you not expect? I mentioned one earlier, to do with guilt. Oh, not guilt trip them for what they've done and what they're eating and stuff like that. Which is something that people do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Weight watchers. Yeah. Weight watchers. Uh, mm. How many pounds you lost this week, Tracy? Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Look here. <laughs> Gladys, how many have you lost this week? No gold star for you. No. Mm. No. Nah. I've lost four pounds. Don't know where to put it, but I've lost four pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. So. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell people, Nigel? What tips would you give them when they get support from other people? What what support have you had to, to reduce your weight? Uh, what things do you do now that, that manage the amounts that you, you eat? Yourself, mind, the things that you do, what have we set up? Like... Uh like food menus and stuff and things that I like and uh, other things that are healthy for me as well. Yeah, and that was something that uh, Trey brought in. Do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about what you put in place for Nigel? Well, yeah, we we um, we decided to look at your what you eat and and, and bringing in more uh, nourishing foods because oh, of yeah. what you eat. Ah, that's, that, that's what you need. Yeah, you don't know. I mean, I think you were probably malnourished, even though you were overweight, because there was nothing of substance to what you were eating. No, nah, um, there wasn't. So we brought in... It's from a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> in, you know. <laughs> uh, so we brought in more um, vegetables, didn't we, and yeah, fruit. Uh, fruit and stuff like that, yeah. Uh, we changed, so like, instead of having white bread, we got like wholemeal bread and... Um, mm. We just reducing your dairies so we could have it but not as much so it, it was to do really with that wasn't it be more aware and then we got you the um you got the pressure cooker which changed things i think quite a yeah. lot for you it did yeah yeah so now you plan your meals um and what goes into that is good food you know you make yourself a good meal yeah which, definitely yeah, yeah i do and, you, and of course you planned, of, you know, over the time you use it, of what you like, you know, the flavourings you like, the vegetables you like to go in it, and you have different kind of meats that go in it, and so you've got control of that. 
Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, which is a lot better, I feel, for yourself. And your shopping list, I mean, that, that's the thing that yeah. you uh, take control of nicely, don't you? Yeah, I do, yeah. And it's all about control. It's not about the control from this side, the support side. It's about, you know, working with the individual. And, you know, it, it, when we talk about menus, we don't talk about set menus, are we? No. You know, because I think set menus that quite often are in supported living, uh, the person in many ways is institutionalised because they actually think, oh, it's Friday, so I have to have that. Rather than, okay, well, what, what's on your menu what do you want to have do you yeah. want to have something different tonight you know uh, we just sometimes we carry a bit take away just yeah. you know I odd time you know and we'd actually sit and eat with them which is you know something that uh, I think uh, is important um, so on that I think time is starting to, to, to march on any key points in that discussion that, that we need to be uh, going over again any key points that came out there for people listening? Well, I, I think one of the things I found was most important for you, Nigel, is that you were enjoying what you were doing. Yeah, I, 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 I am. Yeah, you enjoy cooking your meals and choosing what you want. So that way you're engaging more with, with what you're actually eating and, and, and making better choices, but you're enjoying doing that. I mean, when you got the pressure cooker, I noticed how much you were enjoying using it and cooking. Uh, definitely, yeah. And I think that's a big thing. What about the variety uh, of choice, Nigel? What about the um, the kinds of things that you choose for your for your menus, for your recipes, or whatever? How do you feel about that? Good. It's nice to have a choice instead of just having the set set menus as I said before. And, you know, that, that's something that, that in the early days was difficult because it I think, was, you yeah. know, you, you in many ways kind of thought, oh, well, I shouldn't be being told what to eat. I should be choosing it myself. And we managed to get over that. We did, yeah. And, you know, you got to remember as well, you lost well over seven stone. Yeah. And that, you know, that's still a massive credit to you because, you know, you worked with Trey uh, to get down to there. So even though you stumble a little bit now, you're still seven odd stone away from where you were. You know, so that's, that's massive, that, isn't it, really? And a lot of that's to do with the actual uh, input and the difference in, in, you know, menus and not buying certain things and fat reduction and all the rest of it. But without that that guilt tripping, you know? Oh, Nigel, you've had that this week. You can't be doing that. That's no good, is it? No, it is not. So, any of the key points? What about emotionally that I mentioned, especially this time of year? And also when things aren't so good in your life and food's around. Is that a key area? Yeah. Key point? Yeah, it is. It's, it's um, for you to be able to express how you're feeling when you're feeling a bit uh, low and, uh, and overwhelmed so that you don't do, you know, maybe eat, overeat. And yeah. managing your emotions better um, but also it's better for you and I should be able to express that and talk through things instead of bottling it up and you just eat the way yeah because one of the things that um, is a real I think anyway a, a difficult area within the addiction circles is when people fall from grace fall off the wagon whichever phrase you want to use and then someone not necessarily verbally but in a way there's that's almost like, oh, why do you do that? And then immediately people think, oh, God, I failed, you know? And the worst thing you can do within, within the addiction is to make someone feel they've failed because you feed me more and more. Because right. they're going to go away feeling as though they've failed and let you down. Yeah. And then they're going to probably order you again, you know? And that, that, that sadly uh, is still around now. Uh, and even just a look or a tut. Just something simple like that can mm -hmm. set someone one back. And I know, because I've had first-hand um, experience, not just with clients, but also with my own mother, uh, where she would look at me knowing that I'd seen her in a state of shambled state, full of alcohol, not wanting to give me eye contact. Uh, and I knew in that moment she felt ashamed. Because this is her son that she brought into the world, seeing her in that situation... And sometimes she would, because I was told this, because I knew people around there, she would shortly after that go to the off license and buy another bottle of sherry and consume yeah. amounts of that. It's a shame. But also an element of guilt as well, 
you know and I, I, I always used to be very careful when I went in to, to try to be in a certain way when I wasn't meant to feel that way you know uh, I didn't mean I was condoning that she was killing herself but it was just right okay ma'am you're struggling but I'm here to actually help you not to, to judge you and then two weeping Will and Annie's came in and <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the sink. Um, so it doesn't work, does it? No. But the measured, moderate approach, which is what we've adopted with you, yeah, it's been a difficult road, but we're getting there. It seems to be working, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you haven't shot back up again to the uh, danger zone. No, I haven't. And I think if we keep on going the way we're going, do you believe this, Nigel, that we will get you down further? Yeah. Yeah. And I Definitely. think the, 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 the aim for me is, and we discussed this last week, is to get you below 16 stone. Oh, definitely, yeah. And I know if we talk about 16 stone, listeners, Nigel's a big lad, he's well built. So actually, I don't see that as, as, as a major, major issue. It's the extra fat around his middle that's the worry and the concern, isn't it, Nigel? Yeah, it is. So if we get below 16 stone and keep chipping yeah. away there, I think it'll be a lot better for you. Yeah. Workouts, before we go we gave support in relation to your diet yeah. and the choice, all the rest of it to do with your recipes and menus. What about the actual exercise, the activity, which has to go hand in hand with the uh, dietary aspect? What things have you been doing physically to actually help with the weight loss? Not, not much? Not much, no. I have done the cardio, but not as much as I should be. Which shows in your in your yeah. weight, isn't it? Yeah. But again, I'm lucky to be motivated. I can be feeling like God knows shite basically, but I can go in them in that zone and do them weights and then come back out again. Yeah. Still with the same problems, same emotions, but I can do that. I'm lucky that way. You, you're not quite as lucky because you have no like a background like that in regards to physical fitness. No. But that's an area which needs to be worked on. Does, now yeah. we used to regularly work out every week didn't we yes we did and you were motivated to actually do it at the moment if your weight's starting to, to creep up you have to find that motivation to go in that room on a certain set days and do your workout would you agree yeah now the motivation for that who's got to find that me i could tell you not to, i could tell you to go in there and work out on a tuesday friday or whatever but if you feel a bit low, you're going to probably not go in. Yeah? So look at that area, Nigel. Work on that area. Yeah? yeah. Which days would you normally work out? Well, some I do. Uh, Which days were set before you kind of went back a bit? Well, Fridays were set. Yeah. And I just, you know, just did some workouts in between. Mm -hmm. But there's no real, right, on Wednesday we'll do that and on Friday we'll do that, was there? Yeah, no. It was originally anyway. Yeah, it was. I yeah. know it's gone back a bit because you talked about it some time back. So, Friday, from now on, you are got to work out. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, what's your workout going to be? Well, I did the cardio one. That's good, keep doing the cardio because that's important. I do the steppers and stuff. I do. Yeah, the one that Trey showed you. Yeah, well, the, the one we, we yeah. set up. Yeah. Yeah. What I would advise there is, uh, and it's still the same theme, even though it sounds as though we've actually gone off track, uh, I would introduce three cardio sessions a week. Yeah? How long do those cardio sessions take you normally on a Friday? Well, I can do them. Roughly in a few minutes. Usually it takes about 10, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Like. So if you have three of those. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What's that in minutes? 45. Well done, no, so that's good. You, you, yeah, there, Trey. <laughs> She's a mathematician. I knew it. Uh, Just waiting for you to, to say that. Yeah, no, she always does. So that's a 45 no, minute don't. cardio <laughs> workout in the week. Yeah. Two of those days need to be on weights, yeah? You need to get that, that muscle working. Yeah. Now, which weights exercise were you doing until you slipped back? Bench press is your favourite. Yeah, I was doing that one. What about deadlift? No. No? What about bent over row? 
Uh, I still, I can do it, but I still have struggle with that one. Because I can't get the position right, I'm afraid of Right, I'll step in there, and today we'll go back, just for five, ten minutes. I'll, I'll talk you through it, and you can start to, to do it again. Yeah. yeah. I can I can I can do it please. Uh, no, it's okay cuz you know, I mean your coordination was always a problem anyway when we were working out before. So we'll, we'll we'll work on that. Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts on that trip? Well, no, it's it's um, it's just you know, agreeing with yourself um workouts are good for burning fat and also keeping you healthier and more mobile. Um and you feel better in yourself when you do the workouts, I always miss them when I can't do them. So yeah. But it's also good psychologically yeah, as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, and I think if you can get that balance right with with that aspect, it'll help you more with the comfort eating as well. Um, what I do is I do my workout after I've comfort eaten. <laughs> <laughs> that three in the morning. Yeah, it works. It works. <laughs> and and I think for people in your, in your situation now, well, three. Uh, exercises like the bench press, the uh, the deadlift, and the bent over row. Yeah. Yeah. With with a heavier weight, that's enough. Yeah. You're working your body. Yeah. Yeah. The cardio as well. Uh, I think that's crucial. That's the one that you introduced yeah. as well. And I think if you do that the next few weeks up till Christmas, you will see a, a, a difference. But we'll we'll look at that. We'll monitor that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think unless anybody's got anything else to say, no. uh, milestone next. Any thoughts on the next milestone that are important? She's looking at me. <laughs> next in more important milestone and important. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got one I, I thought would be quite was quite good. Kind Go on, of then. important. How you manage your finances now? We support. Yeah. And yeah, spend all. <laughs> Not. Because you because before you got yourself in quite a bit of. Trouble, didn't you? So. But you got it on track, though. You know yeah. what I mean. You know, you, you've got back to your imagining money back at your flat as well. Yeah. I know, yeah. And again, this for me is important. Money, yeah. yeah, it's important Finance. now because in systems, although it's purported to, to help people, in many ways it's controlling people. And you know, the, on the one hand, they'll say, "Oh, it's your money," and then the other, if something goes wrong, they're to blame. You know, this is a balanced activity yeah where you do have control yeah you've got the empowerment but you've also got that support as well if things go wrong yeah yeah so you're not going to train cap in hand to be told off if something goes wrong you're working with it to make sure something doesn't go wrong in the future and that's worked out well i think yeah well, yeah yes. yeah we've, we've got to a good place haven't we i mean it's been hard work but you've stuck at it and I'd like to think you feel better about it, more, less stressed and anxious about your finances now. And that's to your credit as well, yeah. Nigel, because you, you've stuck in, even though it was difficult, you've still hung in there to get to a better place. I mean, this morning they were coming down uh, in the car, and as we said about, he's, he's uh, organised some DVDs that he's, he's wanting to get coming up to, to the Christmas period yeah. there. Now that tells me a lot because you know you're not coming capping down and saying, "Oh, is it okay if I if I get some DVDs yeah. for Christmas?" Because at the end of the day, although you've got to be careful, you don't overspend and buy too much. Yeah, it's not our choice; it's yours. Yeah. So, like I've said before about choice, with every choice comes a consequence. Yeah. So if you choose to override what she's told you to do and you end up buying ten DVDs yeah. as opposed to the ones you actually wanted then that's going to drain your coffers, isn't it? It is, yeah. And I know some houses, some places, some support I live and try to get that balance right, but it either goes that way or that way. Yeah. You've really got to get it in the middle. And that's the best way to empower people, I think, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, tell me, go on, Trip. No, I'm going to say, also, it would be good for you to be able to express how you changed, how you looked at money and finances. Yeah. Yeah, because you have a new kid up with the people, Nigel. Yeah. You know, people are looking to live independently because you, you've shown clearly this is how it works. Yeah? So, on that note, um, as with every time we end the <laughs> podcast, if you have any comments, uh, if they're bad comments, you can feck off. <laughs> um, if they're good ones, fine, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, but just, you know, if Nigel's on a Facebook page now, 
he's got his own Facebook page which uh, I think he's doing really well he's getting jigsaws and other things like that uh, Incredible Hulk t-shirts which were displayed recently people's Christmas presents <laughs> <displayed recently. laughs> we all know what we're getting <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to comment on Nigel's page our um, Facebook page, please do because I'm sure Nigel will, will be will appreciate that uh, because he's doing really well um, and I'm proud of where he's got to. So, on that note, that is indeed a wrap. Okay.